this came free the other day as part of a Jackson's order. Um, it's sealed up, so I don't actually know which colours are in there. But I'm going to have a look. They might be some of the ones I haven't tried yet. I don't know. So you have eight different colours from each one of the super granulating sets. So there's Volcano Yellow, which I don't have. Tundra Orange, which I don't have. Galaxy Pink, which I do. Deep Sea Violet, I don't have that one. Glacier Green, I have that one. Shire Green, I have that one. Forest Brown, I have that one. And Desert Grey, which I don't have. So I think that's four of each, isn't it? Four I haven't tried before and four I have. So I'm gonna swatch these because um, it will be fun and I'll show you. So I've left these to dry for a couple of hours and when I came back into the studio just now I was actually really surprised by how good they all look together. I think that they'd make an excellent little palette all on their own. So if you're looking to get some of the super granulating colours and you don't want to buy too many and you'd like what I would call quite a complete little palette, I think these ones might be quite good. Um, there are some standout colours here for me. The ones I really like, well, actually a couple that I really like are the ones I've already got. So I have the Galaxy Pink and the Glacier Green. Really love those so much. Um, but the one I don't have in the middle here is the Deep Sea Violet. I didn't think that I wanted that or needed that, but having seen it swatched out, it just looks absolutely gorgeous and I could imagine using that quite a lot. I mean, it's kind of similar to some other colours I have, but could be one I add to my wish list on Jackson's, that one. Um, the Forest Brown, I absolutely love, obviously. <laughs> it says Forest Brown, it looks really green. Um, I love that, but I have that one already. I have also got the Shire Green, as I said earlier. Ignore this weird swatch. I think I just added too much water or something. Um, but the ones I don't have, now let's have a look. The Volcano Yellow, it's a nice yellow. It's a nice granulating yellow. And if that's what you want, that would be a lovely one to have. It's very light fast as well, which is great. Um, I don't need it, so I won't be buying that. The Tundra Orange again, let's just have a look at that from a slightly different angle, if I can get that to focus. It's a nice enough colour, but I don't think I need it. Um, we've done the Galaxy Pink, the Deep Sea Violet, the Glacier Green. Yeah, we've done all of those, haven't we? Desert Grey, the one on the end. Um, this is a really interesting grey. It seems to have some yellow coming through there, and I like it. I probably won't be buying it, just because I have quite a few greys already, and obviously I can mix my own as well. But uh, yeah, the Deep Sea Violet, definitely one for the wish list, I think. Something else I'm excited to try and to share with you is this little palette of paint by Aliona of Aliona's Watercolour Creations. Um, that's her YouTube channel. Um, most of you probably know who Aliona is. She very kindly got in touch with me and asked whether she could send me some of her newest collection of paints. So um, I'm really excited to try these. I'm always in awe of anyone who makes their own watercolours. It's something I think sounds so interesting to do. Um, maybe one day I'll try it, but um, I do love trying handmade paints in general. I have quite a collection now. So it'd be really interesting to try these from Aliona. Um, so I'm going to unwrap this now and we're going to swatch them out on the Aquarella watercolour pad. Now I got this from Choosing Keeping a while ago. Really love this paper. It's very, very lightly textured, quite thick watercolour paper. So yeah, let's have a look and see how they look on this paper.
This is such a cute little tin. I love the design on the front. So this is her Sunset palette. So there are four colours. One's called Sargassum, I think. Is that how you say that? <laughs> Red Sea Grass, Sandy Toes and Liquid Gold. Oh, wow. So they look like a lovely collection of colours. Okay, I'm going to unwrap them and we'll swatch them out. I love how she's attached a little magnet to the bottom of each of these and they also have their name. I thought I was going to have to write the name on there, but she has actually printed the name on there. So that's really handy. Really love this collection of colours. They're gorgeous, aren't they? Um, OK, let's just pre-wet them. I'm going to just add a little bit of water to each one. And then we'll see what they look like. Really beautiful little palette. Very nicely put together, Aliona, I like that. The gorgeous design on the front. Okay, so this one was Sargassum. I mean, shall I do my pebble swatching? Maybe I will. Oh my goodness, look at that. Gosh, I wasn't expecting it to be so... It's like it's glowing. This reminds me of like a quinacridone... Is it quinacridone gold? Is that what it's reminding me of? Wow. Super transparent as well, which is beautiful. Just going to add a little bit more in there. Gosh, they feel really nice. By the way, they smell amazing as well. I can smell... I think it's the clove oil I can smell. Um, this is one of the things I love about handmade watercolours is that they always smell so amazing when you wet them. Gosh, that's a beautiful colour, isn't it? It's actually glowing. I don't know if that's coming through on camera, but it's like it's lit from behind or something. Okay, the next one is Red Seagrass. I'm going to, where should we put that? Just here. I can see why she called this the Sunset palette. <laughs> Gosh, they're really nice to use. Now, I've used quite a few handmade watercolours from different sellers, and um, these are really nice quality. They seem to re wet really nicely. They're super smooth to work with. I'm just going to see if I can lift some of that out. Thank you so much, Aliona, for giving me the opportunity to try your watercolours. I mean, it must be a real labour of love to make your own paints. Very satisfying, I should imagine, as well. Imagine painting with something you've actually made. Try and just blend that in a bit. So we don't get a harsh line around the edge. So the next one we're going to try is Sandy Toes, <laughs> which is a funny name. I like that. Okay, I'm going to swatch that one here. I 
This is the kind of colour I really love. A natural earthy colour. Yeah, they look lovely together. Okay, and finally, we're going to try the liquid gold. Oh, that's lovely and smooth. Sometimes metallics can be a little bit more difficult to re-wet and sometimes kind of a little bit gritty too, occasionally. But this one, so smooth. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, what a nice little palette. Okay, um, I'm going to try something. Just want to try painting with them. I want to use this red again. is a little bit like sea coral <laughs> which is kind of appropriate for the palette in a way isn't it yeah they feel lovely to work with I don't know how people do this how do they manage to make their own paints <laughs> I filmed this time lapse from the studio window one afternoon and if you watch the roof you'll see how the rainstorms roll in and then the roof dries and then another rainstorm comes.
I wanted to try painting with the Liquitex acrylic gouache for the first time. So I sat down with the, I think it's like a little introductory set. You get the three primary colours, blue, yellow and red and emerald green, Mars black and titanium white. And I actually started on this piece, but I didn't like how it was going. So you'll see that I switched to another piece and I was much happier with this one. So you'll see the process of this one from start to finish. And um, I'll give you my thoughts on the Liquitex acrylic gouache. As this was a primary colour set, I actually had to mix all of the colours myself. I like to work with a muted colour palette, so I mixed muted greys, blues, greens. You'll see that I'm mixing on that gorgeous Sugar House Ceramic Company palette to my right there. I actually found that this was a really good palette for acrylic gouache. It seems to keep it wet for quite a long time. I don't know whether it's just the Liquitex acrylic gouache that stays wet longer than the Holbein or Turner. See, I'm used to the Holbein and Turner acrylic gouache because I tend to use those two brands. Um, I have never tried any other brand of acrylic gouache before this one. So I'm used to how they behave and they tend to dry quite quickly. I don't know whether the Liquitex version just dries more slowly or whether the palette helped, but I did find that it stayed wet for quite a long time. And I love mixing on a flat ceramic palette like this. I will often use a plate when I'm working with acrylic gouache or my little ceramic palettes, little tiny round palettes. One tip I can give you is never use a plastic palette with acrylic gouache. I made the mistake of doing that once and it took me forever to scrape the paint off and get it clean again. Even soaking it didn't help. I really had to scrape at it and it took forever. So work on a ceramic palette and you will find that you can just soak the palette and the paint will lift off after a minute or two. So let me quickly tell you some of the things I liked and disliked about the Liquitex acrylic gouache. I found that I could create some really beautiful colours with this set. The colours mixed really nicely and I was able to work with a gorgeous limited palette creating greys, greens and blues that were muted from just the Mars Black, the Titanium White, Primary Blue and Emerald Green. I also liked, as I mentioned earlier, the fact that it seems to stay workable for longer. It definitely seems to stay wet longer than the Holbein and Turner equivalents. And I also liked that the dried paint didn't seem to mark as easily as the Holbein and Turner, the Holbein in particular. So they tend to have a very velvety matte finish. And I find that if I'm working with darker colours, I have to be very careful not to rest my hand on that part of the painting or knock the painting because it will mark really easily. Because the Liquitex has a very slight sheen, it's by no means shiny, but it does have a slight sheen and that means it seems to mark far less than the Holbein or the Turner. So a couple of things I didn't like about the Liquitex acrylic gouache. One was that I found it has a very strong smell. You notice it more when you first squeeze it out of the bottle and it does tend to dissipate a little bit as you're working with it. I didn't notice it so much once it had been exposed to the air, but at first it was a very strong smell. And as I don't remember the Holbein or Turner smelling at all, I was quite surprised by this. So it's quite a chemical smell and it did bother me quite a bit. 
Um, the second thing is that I don't like the design of the bottles. I found the caps really difficult to get off and the bottles were quite tricky. I mean, when it came to squeezing the paint out, I sometimes had to squeeze really hard and I find a tube is just so much better. So those were just a couple of things I didn't like about this paint. So before we have a look at this piece completely finished, let's have a look at some of the other paintings I've been working on. Most of these will be available through my next shop update, which will be happening next week. If you'd like to find out when that is, please sign up to my mailing list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this studio vlog and painting process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still with me at the end, leave a comment below saying smelly paints. And I'll know that you made it this far into the video. Okay, thanks everyone. And I'll see you soon.